This is the Junior News Network. Good afternoon, America, and welcome to the Junior News Network. Today, on our installment of Summer Reading and Review, we're going to take you in depth to a terrible occurrence that has happened in Meridian, Mississippi. My name is Thomas Olson, and I'm going to be leading you through this story, along with my co-anchors and co-reporters who will be live on the scene. Today is June 21st, 1964, a day that will always be remembered as one that will outrage Americans all across the nation. Oh, hello. Welcome back to the Junior News Network. On this Sunday, June 21st, 1964, a tragedy has occurred down in Meridian, Mississippi. Three young civil rights activists, two of whom are white, the other being African American, have been reported missing and are assumed to be dead. Our major assumption right now, all we can give you from our JNN network, is that they have been killed by members of the Ku Klux Klan. The day before, yesterday, on Saturday, these three men were pulled over speeding and arrested, put in jail, and the bail was set at $20 each. Today, these men were released from prison and drove off. Just hours later, they were reported missing by a colleague, another civil rights activist. They are assumed to have been abducted or even killed by members of the infamous Ku Klux Klan. Now live on the scene in Meridian, our news reporter, Curtis Mitchell, is going to interview Robert Moses, an African-American man who is the head of the voting rights campaign. Curtis. Thomas. I'm here now, live at the scene, with Mr. Robert Moses. Mr. Moses, tell us a little about yourself. Thank you. I joined the SNCC in 1961, and then I came out to Mississippi when they elected me the head of the voting rights campaign. Thank you. Now, what progress was this campaign making? Well, after many months and years of uh, tough efforts, I didn't see any change, and we needed it. So I decided that to see some change, that we needed to uh, recruit white students. That sadly, if something happened to them, all of America would show some attention, attention that was needed. How do you respond to the news after you heard your colleagues went missing? Well, at first I was very distraught, nervous, because all they were trying to do was achieve some justice. But I knew that after they went missing, we were going to get the recognition and the awareness from America that we needed. So, thank you. Very interesting. Thank you. Great reporting work, Curtis. Now we're taking you live with Curtis again and Deputy Sheriff Price. Thank you, Thomas. Now I move on to our next interviewee, Deputy Sheriff Price. Uh, Deputy Sheriff Price is a suspect in the missing appearances of Schwerner, Goodman, and Cheney. Deputy, what were you doing on the night that these people went missing? Well, I was uh, simply patrolling the highway when I saw them speeding down, so I pulled them over because I was simply upholding the law of the United States. Uh, and the next morning I released them on a $20 bail. And that was the last I saw of them. Now, there's reports that you may have communicated with the Ku Klux Klan. Are these reports true? I have no comment on that. However, whatever the Ku Klux Klan did or did not do was simply upholding the laws of God. Interesting. Now, if you'll excuse me. Wait. W. Sheriff Price, Malcolm X stated that there is conspiracies that the government, not solely in the South, but in the whole country, does not want the African American race to vote. What do you have to say about this? As I stated before, I'm simply upholding the laws of God. Good day. No, you're upholding the laws of evil. <laughs> now I'll send it over to Joe Kane, our commentator. Thanks, Curtis, for those enlightening interviews. A touching story today in Meridian, Mississippi, which White House officials are already calling a turning point in the battle for civil rights. 
but one must call a question why these supposed murders in particular are attracting so much media attention across the nation. The obvious answer being that two white people were targeted in the killings. This underscores a painful reality for blacks across the nation, which is that the media will only care if a white person is murdered. I can only speculate on how this will affect black-white relations, but I imagine that it will increase racial tension across the nation. However, one thing is for sure, though these murders may be attracting attention for all the wrong reasons, they are enlightening people to the violent persecution of civil rights activists in the South, which I imagine will add more momentum to the civil rights movement than ever before. We all hope and pray that some form of redemptive process brings justice to these detestable and bigoted killers. Back to you, Tom. Wow, what a story. In conclusion, I'd just like to point out that this event falls into the period eight of the AP US curriculum. Period eight is from 1945 to 1980. After World War II, the United States was grappling with prosperity and unfamiliar international responsibilities while struggling to live up to its ideals. However, this matter did not deal with foreign relations or our foreign standing in the world. This dealt with inner conflicts. Secondly, our national identity is the theme that this falls into. Genders, economic classes, racial cultures, and conflicts between individuals and our national identities is clearly at play in this story. We have the whites who for many, many centuries have acted with aggression towards the African Americans in our country. This has torn our country apart, has certainly kept us from becoming unified, and now I'm relaying this information to you. Lastly, contextualization is the AP thinking